Just hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring, ring, jingling too. Out here it's lovely weather for a bear and a snowman like you. Out here the snow is falling and friends are calling you. Ah, come on, it's lovely weather for a bear and a snowman like you. Hey, that's pretty good harmony for a snowman. Actually, I'm a snowman. What's a snowman? Nothing's a snowman. What's a snow with you? Ah. There's a Christmas party at the home of Fuzzy Bear. It'll be a perfect party with my friends all there. We'll, we'll be singing the songs we love to sing without a single stop. At the fireplace while we watch the chestnuts pop, 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 pop. But seriously, Fuzzy, what do you think of the weather we're having? It's so cold. How cold is it? It's so cold that when I opened my refrigerator this morning, there was a polar bear inside trying to keep warm. Uh, <laughs> but it's always cold at Christmas. Ah, uh, Christmas. Time for Santa Claus and his eight prancing reindeer. That's reindeer. No, that's snow, darling. Ah! <laughs> Man, you guys are the funniest comedy teams in the business. Oh, really? Thank you. Thank you. Stay right where you are. Come in. Come in. Come on. Waka waka waka, and welcome to a very special podcast. This is the podcast where we watch all your favorite TV shows from yesteryear and then discuss them over a glass of wine. I'm Patrick M. Dunn. You probably remember me from the previous like 38 ish episodes of the podcast. And I'm joined here, as always, by Kat Halstead, the author. Hello. D- do I say that like verbatim every episode? Yeah, pretty much. It's like pretty much almost the exact same thing. You know when you like watch a TV show and they always say the same thing in the beginning and you always wonder if they remember it? Or if it's just like it's there and they don't realize they're saying the exact same thing. Yeah, or like or if you ever remember of like how do like singers remember the words to all their songs? I guess you just kinda it gets ingrained in your memory after a while. Yeah, they're ingrained in your memory. Like right now, I have the Monkeys theme song ingrained in my memory. Just like I have the opening to the podcast ingrained in my mem. <laughs> and I always like do the same like vocal ticks too. Like the this is. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even think I talk like normally talk like that in real life. But I just maybe it's my show voice. I don't know. If you're. I'm odd. I am the star voice. Yes, but uh, welcome to a Christmas edition. Uh, We're going into Muppet Vision tonight, right? Yes. Time to talk about some Muppets. Woohoo! Is Muppet Vision a thing? Or did I just make that up? Um, actually, I think there is like Muppet Vision. There was like a thing at Disney World. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's like a 3D ride, right? Yeah. I I went on it when I went to Disney World, like, way back in the day. Yeah, um, I believe that might have been one of Jim Henson's last Muppet-related project, from what I get. Yeah, I think it's, like, it's considered, like, his last project that he worked on. It's actually called Muppet Vision 3D. It opened up in 1991, just freshly after his death. His horrifying death, may I add. Yeah. (laughs) Uh... I never really knew how he died. I thought, like, he was just an, a really old man or he just had, like, cancer or something. But he was young. He was, like, in his early 50s. Yeah, he was young and he got an infection that just... He just ignored it. Destroyed him. Yeah, he just... Uh, yeah. I guess... Well, because, you know, you have a sore throat. You're like, okay, it's nothing. It's just the sore throat. It'll go away. Yeah, but I guess he was, like, then... coughing up blood and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And his yeah. wife suggested he go to the doctor, but he was raised a Christian science scientist or whatever. Christian science was his religion growing up. So those are those people that like yeah. believe in like modern medicine practices. Yeah. So, and instead he's like kind of a shy guy. He didn't want to be a bother to anybody. Yeah. So his. So entire, he put off going to the doctor. 
So he, Until it was basically too late. He had toxic shock syndrome, which resulted mm-hmm. in organ failure, uh, strep throat, scarlet fever, rheumatic fever, and other infections. Yeah. And um, But he's not the only uh, celebrity to have been inflicted by this disease. Uh, Clive Barker, has he survived it. He fully recovered from it. Oh, wow. The English writer, film director, and visual artist. Mm-hmm. Shocking. So I guess um, if you have a slight sore throat or any weird ailments, I recommend you go to the doctor ASAP. Yeah. That's just, uh, this is a PSA announcement for all of our listeners out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but And vaccinate your children, damn it. Yes. We are, this podcast is, are not, we're not anti-vaxxers. Is that what they're called? Yeah. We'll probably get a lot of hate mail from this, so we'll just kind of shut it Bring it on. You can email us at a very special podcast at gmail.com. Or go to our website, a very special podcast.tumblr.com and find our email address there. And what's our Twitter? At very podcast. And send us your, uh, your hateful messages if you're mad at us for being um, against anti vaxxers. Because I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to get the Jim Henson disease from your unvaccinated children. No offense. Exactly. I want to live a long and prosperous life. I want to be as old as, like, Zsa Zsa Gabor someday, except have limbs. Oh, poor Zsa Zsa. She's like a vampire. She's like an American vampire. Oh, she's, like, basically... Just a drugged up body now. Do we know? Her? Oh, she's 90. I thought she was over 100. Holy shit, she's like 98. Yeah. So she's older than Prohibition. Yep. <laughs> Fun fact. You see, you learn things on this podcast. We are here to provide you with really random trivia that you would never expect to know. In, unless you go to Wikipedia a lot, which I do. <laughs> Uh, I believe, didn't we have an episode in which we had, like, fun facts about Fiji water? Yeah, there's a, uh, I want to say, like, Fiji Hauser. All right, I'll have to go back. I kind of, I vaguely remember it. But... Yeah, I think it was the Fiji Hauser episode. <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember how we came up to that, but whatever. Uh, how do we get start talking about Zsa Zsa Gabor? I honestly, that was two seconds ago. I, I don't <laughs> even know how you got to her. I don't know. I just don't. See, in my mind, I thought Zsa Zsa Gabor was like 116 years old, so I I just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What's crazy is I don't think this is the first Zsa Zsa Gabor conversation. Really? We've, we've on had, the podcast. We've yeah. had... I think we might have mentioned her once or twice before. Did we do like a Green Acres episode or something? No. I don't remember where we talked about her, but I think we did. All right. For, to our fans out there, if you hear the Zsa Zsa Gabor episode, because I'm not listening to all 37 episodes, let us know which one it is so we can go back and listen to it. And like, tell us the um, the minute, like how many, how long into the episode it was, so we can um, give it a... Hashtag few, it. Yes. Hash, hashtag Zsa Zsa. But I probably won't follow that hashtag, so you're just going to have to tweet us or email us. At Very Podcast. Yes. And um, so, as we previously mentioned, tonight's episode is in Muppet Vision, because we watched A Muppet Family Christmas. We sure did. Which is the classic television special starring pretty much all of Jim Henson's Muppets. Yeah, pretty much. If they existed in 1987... They showed up. Yeah. I think the only ones that didn't, like, pop in were the ones from, like, The Dark Crystal and Labyrinth, which I believe are probably, like, Yeah, those, are, like, those are the only ones that didn't pop up. Yeah, so... Because you had The Muppets, you had Sesame Street, you had Fraggle Rock, and then you had The Muppet Baby Puppets. Yeah, so we, we are witnessing the actual puppets, not the animated counterparts. Yeah. And, uh, speaking of Jim Henson, uh, he also has an on-screen cameo. Yes, he does. And um, he he's the one of two humans that are in this episode. The other human is Doc from Fraggle Rock. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he has an appearance. 
And fun fact, did you know that in the UK version of Fraggle Rock, when they did the outer space segments, mm -hmm. uh, Doc wasn't on it. They had like a whole new like segment that they that they flashed over. Yeah, I think they also did something different in Canada. Oh, did they? Yeah, I think so. Oh, damn. I I was doing a little research lesson. I just read about the UK version, but um, I didn't know about Canadian. Yeah, I think I read something about how the um, Canadian version was also a little different and had like a different person or whatever. Oh, let me do a little. Um, let me do a little quick investigated. Hold on. Or did I just totally like make that up in a crazed haze? Uh, well, the show was co-produced by British television and Canadian television and HBO, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. All right. The the British inserts were filmed in uh, Gillingham and presents Fraggle Rock as a rocky sea island with a lighthouse. In the German version, the action takes place beneath the workshop of the inventor, played by another actor. Okay, so I guess in different in France they had a um a it took place in a bakery. So I think you're right. But I don't see anything. So about they just kind of like switched it all up yeah, so I guess, that I guess the it fit with whatever locale. Yeah, so the U.S. version, um, or the U.S. No, no, the U.S., Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, Netherlands, and a bunch of other countries had the the version that we got, and then Britain. Okay, German so Doc and Sprocket. Yeah, so Britain, France, and Germany got their, got a different version of it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, um. And Nickelodeon, at one point in time, uh, aired the UK version in the uh, early 90s. Oh, really? Which, huh. you know what? I think I remember seeing it one time, and I was like, why are there these weird fucking, like, non-Sprocket and Doc characters? <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of weird if you're expecting Doc and Sprocket, and you get, like, something totally different. Yeah. A remember? lighthouse keeper or something. <laughs> Do you remember the um the Fraggle Rock cartoon? Yes. And the the yes, I, I think I remember the cartoon better than the actual puppets. Oh really? I uh because I don't think I had HBO, but I think um, Nickelodeon at one point re-aired Fraggle Rock. Yeah. So I think that's because I didn't have an HBO growing up, so. Huh. And in, in the um, in the animated version of Fraggle Rock, just like the Muppet Babies, Doc is sh only shown from the neck down, so it's kind of like Nanny. You mm -hmm. don't see like his head. Crazy. And there was only thirteen episodes of the animated Fraggle Rock. Like it didn't catch on. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I guess every episode sure. consisted of two 15-minute stories, so they might have just mixed and matched them, so you kind of maybe would... Yeah. It never felt like you were seeing the same episode. And when you're a kid, you really... I don't think you realize when you're watching something for, like, the millionth time. Oh, no, you forget. all. The, you forget very, very easily. Yeah, because trust me, I watch, um, like, truck videos with my nephew... And there are ones like, yeah, there are ones where like they have the songs and he'll know the songs because he's watched them so much, but he still look like watches it like it's the first time he's watching this backhoe video or monster truck video or whatever. Oh yeah. Like it's probably like the same way I used to watch like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Mm -hmm. I would never remember the whole movie, but I would watch it maybe in like segments at a time. So it just seemed like, like I must've, it felt like I watched like like, 40 hours of Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure, and I just never, like, knew how it all connected. Yeah. Like, I don't, I think it was, like, a teenager when I finally saw it from, like, start to finish in one swoop, and I was like, that's it? Like, that's how long it was? Like, this just felt like hours to me when I was, <laughs> when I was a child. Well, yeah, because you have, you don't really understand time when you're a child. Yeah, like, I would watch the beginning of the Pee Wee Herman part, and I'm like, I want to watch the one with Large Marge. And, like, people be like, it's coming, it's coming. I'm like, no, I want to watch the Marge Large episode. Because I thought they were, like, episodes. Uh-huh. Probably because I would, like, th I would have the VHS, I would throw it in, and then just get bored. Just, like, like, wherever it was. Yeah. 20 minutes later, I get bored and just shut it off. And then, like, three days later, I might go back to it. 
Yeah, that's kind of like my nephew will watch like a video and he'll be like, okay, next video. He'll just start pressing the Kindle screen to like go to the next YouTube video. It's kind of like when um, if he's bored, so it's kind of like as an adult when you're listening to music on like Pandora. Mm-hmm. You're like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. I'm gonna you're like, it. nope, no. Do you remember? And then you use all your skips up, and you're like, fuck. Yeah, in the days of cassettes, you would have to listen to like <laughs> the whole cassette, and you had to change it. You had to like walk around find the cassette. <laughs> Because you were probably yep. listening on your Sony Walkman, and you were probably in a oh, yeah. you were in a different room than where all your tapes were, or you were outside. You didn't have the entire music library ever made at your fingertips. Yeah. So youth, we had it. Very well, tough. And of course, then the cassette tape, something would happen, and you have to rewind all the tape with the pencil. Oh, yeah, because, like, or you have the one that it wouldn't rewind. It would only fast forward, so you have to, like, flip it over so you can rewind it. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I must have had, like, shitty cassette players for some reason. Sounds like it. I don't think I ever had a cassette player that just fast forwarded. You never had one of those? I swear to God they exist. I've I've brought them up to so many people, and people are like, I've never had that. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, I don't... like. It's yeah, you must have had, like, just a malfunctioning one or something. Did it, No, it didn't even have, like, a rewind button. It just only had a fast-forward button. So, Are you serious? What the hell, like, cheap knockoff did you have? I don't know. It's probably, like, an A-set player or, like, a cassette player with a K. Yeah. And, yeah, so, like, you would listen to a song and you, you want to listen to it again. So I'd have to take the tape out, flip it, fast-forward it, and then, like, just guess, like, where it was, like, been enough time. And then flip oh it back. my gosh! Then flip it back over and hit play. And like, oh shit, I went back too far, or you didn't go back far enough. So someone out there oh has, probably has this cassette player. I hope. If anybody knows what Patrick is actually talking about, email us and let us know because I think Patrick's crazy. Or maybe I'm just like maybe it was just a dream I had. I don't know. <laughs> it is a dream that you were just so sure was so real. Like the dream I had. But you're the, talking about it like a real memory. I had a dream the other day that they made a new season of Lost. <laughs> oh my god. And they built cul de sacs on the island. <laughs> and I remember like watching the show and I like I remember I was in the dream watching the show. And I, whoever was in the room with me while I was watching, I was like, wait. They've definitely showed aerial views of the island. How come they never saw the cul-de-sacs before? How come they never saw the cul-de-sacs before? <laughs> it was like a desperate housewife's neighborhood. Like the, the neighborhood from the Burbs. <laughs> but yeah. They kind of actually did have that in Lost, but it was like fancier houses. Yeah, it was what the others lived in. Yeah, well, they kind of just lived in like little, like, kind of like little huts. No, they had, like, actual houses. Yeah, but they weren't, like, the ones from a dream. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm picturing, like, a full-blown, like, cul-de-sac with, like, a road and, like, garages, garage doors, basements, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, nice lawns, pretty much, like, like, so, like, that one, like, studio lot in, like, Universal Studios that, like, the Munsters and Desperate Housewives and the Burbs is filmed at and, like, a yeah. million other things. That's the name. My favorite studio lot. Yeah. Like, we should just do a podcast where we just do shows and movies that took place in that lot. <laughs> that would be awesome. That is actually a great idea. That is. Yeah. And we did, we have, like, we'll have to research that more. Yeah. And I wonder, that lot's still around. And, like, things recently you have filmed yeah. there, right? Yeah, it's still around. It and it gets like they move stuff around every so often for whatever they're working on. Yeah, like if they need to bust the mus- monster house out for some reason, they do. If I don't know, they need mm-hmm. if they need the um, like Nicolette Sheridan's house for something, they'll bust it out. Yeah, or if they need like any of them, they'll just like there it is. Yeah, they can they can paint the paint them or just like change the yeah, porch they, around. Well, because they did do basically a remodel of that back lot for Desperate Housewives. They painted all the houses. They put out the new um, they did new landscaping for a bunch of them. Like, they put up some, like, fancy new shrubbery. Yeah. Like, it was supposed, 
they they put a bunch of wisteria bushes because it was wisteria lane. Oh yeah, they didn't want people to be like, "Hey, that's Gail Gordon's house from the Burbs." Yeah, exactly. Which is <laughs> the same house that Edie lived in. So, on Desperate Housewives. So Edie and Gail Gordon's character from the Burbs live in the same house. Yeah. Hot damn. Yeah. What about uh, Tom Hanks's house? Tom Hanks and Carrie Fisher's house. Uh, oh gosh. Uh, I want to say it might have been Susan's house. I'm not. I don't remember right now. Okay. Isn't it weird that we didn't save this conversation for for the Burbs episode? I think we had this conversation in the Burbs episode. Uh, I don't. That and episode. Another episode. And we just don't remember them. That that Burbs episode's like three hours long. I couldn't get through it. Yeah. My apologies. Um, but yeah, because we talked about the backlot a second time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think when we did... um, Did we do the monster? No, we did the monsters before the Burbs. I don't know. No, we did the Burbs before the monsters. I think it was actually... No, no, no. The, the monsters um, came out after the Burbs. Oh, I don't know. I honestly don't know anymore. It's all one blur to me. I think it was when we did Dennis the Menace, we talked about the back a lot again. Yeah, didn't maybe. We? Yeah, possibly. Maybe like the um, like a Dennis the Menace movie or something was filmed there. Who knows? Oh no, Dennis the Menace was the other back lot. Okay, I don't know. I think we're boring our audience with us. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because Mr. Wilson's house is the same as Major Nelson's house. Okay. Or something ridiculous like that. That's that's how these backlots get reused. All right, we'll say we'll we'll do like a behind the scenes episode in the future. But tonight we are doing a Muppet. Yeah, we're on the Muppets. We should <laughs> talk about the Muppets. Yeah, there's so many things that we could talk about, and we're talking about fucking backlots. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of love backlots. It's that sounds so wrong. I, I mean, I like the idea of the backlots, but we don't have our facts straight, so we're just kind of, like, speculating. Yeah. And people are just going okay, to so, really piss at us. Muppet Family Christmas. What's going on in this? What's uh, the basic story? All right, so it's Christmas Eve, I believe? Yes. Uh, and Fozzie Bear is driving to his mom's house in the, the farmland or something? Yeah, in the country. In the country. So where do the Muppets live? New York? Hollywood? I think they live in Hollywood, yeah. Alright, so they're, they're like, driving. Like, it definitely looks, like, northeastern, like, just judging by... This is definitely, like, a Midwest, northeast kind of thing. Yeah. Where they are. So, all the Muppet Show Muppets are driving there. So, it's Kermit, Gonzo, Camilla the Chicken, um, Dr. Teeth and his band, Scooter, mm -hmm. and, like, um... Beaker and Honeydew and, like, all the other names I don't know. Like, the, uh, the characters that I know their faces, but I don't know their names. Yeah, exactly. And, like... The only ones not... The only, like, Muppet Show Muppets not in the car are the Swedish Chef, Miss Piggy, and Rolf. Yeah, and they show up later, though. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert! And so they're, like... They, are, they like clown card themselves into this like small car or truck i don't remember what, what, what it was it looked like a station wagon yeah it was kind of like a, um like a weird version of the beverly hillbillies car yeah. but it was like a station wagon but they all fit in there well because they're all like small kind of like rizzo the rat and camilla they're small and kermit yeah small, they're, so, they're mostly small so you can fit like fucking like 10 people in the front seat yeah and but I don't know. For I guess sure. the um the Electric Mayhem had all their equipment though, like all their their band equipment. Yeah. So I mean, I imagine that took up room. And, and then everybody's luggage. Yep. Yeah, so um, Kermit mentions that like, oh, like, um, you sure your mom is gonna be like okay with us coming to the your like your family's house? And he's like, yeah, my mom loves surprises. Like she loves when people just show up. And. <laughs> Meanwhile, we cut over to um, Fozzie Bear's mom, Emily Bear. Is that her name? Yes, Emily. Yeah, Emily, which is like the weirdest name for like an elderly bear. <laughs> it's like the weirdest name for a Muppet. Because <laughs> it's like, elderly. it's like such a just normal, common name. Yeah, well, she was kind of like a, a normal mom 
She she was like yeah. very Cindy Walshish. Mm-hmm. She was very like hospitable. Uh, very yeah, welcoming. very for Donna Reed type. Yeah, she doesn't care if like sixty people just show up at her house on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Even though she did no preparation so, or cleaning, and she was pretty much planning to go to Malibu for the holiday weekend. Yeah, she was like <laughs> on her way out. She was just waiting for like her renter to show up. Yeah. Because she rented her house out to Doc and his dog Sprocket from Fraggle Rock because he wanted to spend a quiet Christmas in the country. Yep. Because he got sick of hearing about Sprocket talks about Fraggle. Yep. Let's be honest. So Sprocket doesn't talk, but Doc understands that Sprocket talks about the Fraggles? Is that the whole yeah. gist of the episode? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so uh, Doc and Sprocket show up, and d- do they bust into song? No, they don't. All right. There's no song. We should mention, alright, so this episode is like 50 minutes long. It's like mm-hmm. 40 minutes of songs. <laughs> yeah, it is mostly music. It, when I was rewatching it this morning, I was like, oh my god. I, I like looked at the time left on the video on YouTube I was watching, and I was like, okay, how many? Like, I know it's almost over. And then I'm like, oh my god, it's like 10 minutes of just singing. It, the, song, singing. the song to scene ratio is like 70 30, maybe. Yeah. Like, the last like 15, 20 minutes of the, of the um, episode, it's just one long. It's like. 15 songs bunched together. It's like a medley of songs. Yeah, it's this major medley, and you're just sitting there like, O-M-G. You know when you're watching, like, the Oscars, and they, they play, like, all the songs at once sometimes, like, from a movie? Like, from multiple movies? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. It's just like, all right, now for, like, the best song nominations. And, like, Cirque du Soleil comes out and, like, performs to music. <laughs> like Yeah, and you're just movie. like, oh, my God, why... Are we taking precious time? But I for the Muppets, it works, I feel like. Yeah, because they're kind of like a vaudeville act, which is mostly singing with like a little bit of stage tomfoolery <laughs> thrown in. So I guess it kind of works that way. Yeah, but, exactly. But as soon as like the story starts picking up and they start you know, getting somewhere, they just bust into a song. And you're like, oh, come on. I yeah, just, <laughs> people just start singing. <laughs> And they pretty much they do every singing. Christmas it's song. like, more ridiculous than a musical. They pretty much do, like, every Christmas song. You get Jingle Bells, Jingle Bell Rock, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Deck the Halls. Like, all the standards. Yeah, all the standards that you would find in 1987 are in this episode. Performed by the Special Muppets. thing, whatever you want to call it. And does this, so. is this available? Like, you can you, like, buy the soundtrack? I actually don't know. I meant to look it up on iTunes, but I just didn't get a chance. Because I would probably listen to it, to be honest with you. Honestly, I'm thinking about just going and maybe finding a way to rip the music from the special. Uh, If you want me to do it, because I can just download the episode and then just send it to you, and you can just do whatever the hell you want with it. (laughs) Oh, I already have the episode downloaded. All right, then fucking knock yourself out. We do not contone that. I was trying to, like, not admit that on air. <laughs> eh, who cares? No one, no one listens to the podcast. If someone made it this far, then you deserve a prize. Just send us a tweet, <laughs> and we will, like, send you a prize. We don't know what the prize is. Yeah, tweet us. We'll just send you a prize. Tweet us at Very Podcast and do hashtag backlot. And we will send yeah. you a Hashtag prize. Hashtag back lot. And we will send you a prize. We will send you something. Yeah. We might send you a very special podcast ornament, because I have, like, a few of them that you sent me last year. <laughs> I'm guessing you didn't put up a tree this year? Uh, no, and nor did I last year. I don't think I even have copies of the ornaments. Oh, uh, if you want one, I'll send it to you. <laughs> If no one well, us. I have the files I use to make them. So. Oh, okay. So you can just make them brand new with your shrinking dink material. Yes, exactly. When I have access to a shrinking my dink craft person. supplies again. Oh, is they in storage? Yeah, pretty much everything is in storage. Goddamn. Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, 
Fozzie Bear arrives pretty much seconds after Doc and Sprocket show up. Yeah, like, Doc is just, like, getting there. He's going upstairs to put his bags in his room. Emily's going to be on her way out. And then Fozzie shows up with everybody. And they all come. And he's like, Mom, I'm home for Christmas. And she's like, oh, crap. And then he slips. He slips on the icy yeah, patch. there's an icy patch. There's, like, this ice patch on the porch that nobody does anything about. No, like, every character that comes to the farmhouse this holiday slips on the icy patch, and they reference the ice patch every time. It's, yeah, it's, but they don't think, let's throw down some salt, no, or like, sugar, or sand, or kitty litter, or anything. Or scrape it out. Yeah. And it reminds me of, on, on Modern Family, like, The Broken Step. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Pavel it. just left that broken step over and over again. <laughs> I think there's like a super cut of people falling down the broken step. <laughs> there probably is. <laughs> that, I, I, don't, uh, I don't watch Modern Family that much, but whenever I do, someone always trips on the broken step, and that's just one of my favorite like television gags of all time. Oh my, I don't even know if the step's even broken anymore. No, they. The, I did see an episode where they fixed it, and it was like season four, maybe? Yeah, I think, as I was going to say, I think somebody like finally like really hurt themselves. Uh, like Phil, I think, fix it. Phil finally went ahead and fixed it. But, but <laughs> in this holiday special, no one did anything about the icy patch. Nothing. Yeah. And, um, all right, so... Fozzie and his weirdo friend show up, cause, and I love how Emily referred to to them as his weirdo friend. Yeah, and um, she she doesn't recognize anybody, but later on in the episode when they're watching the Muppet Baby puppet like videos, she yeah. talks about how she remembers when everyone was that young. Yeah, but she can't remember Kermit's name and the fact that he's a frog, not a lizard. Yeah, and she it, it seems like she she's just meeting everyone for the first time, but when she's watching like the family mm. videos of the Muppet Babies, she's like, oh, I remember when you were all that little. Yeah. So she's it's either weird. I think she's senile maybe. Either she's senile or it's just the fact that there is some discrepancies in the Muppet timeline. Possibly. Because don't they all meet in the Muppet movie? Well, the way I think all right, so I think what came first, the Muppet show or the Muppet movie? I believe the Muppet show. Okay. I believe the Muppet movie was just like, um, like a movie starring the Muppet Show characters. Ah, oh, okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I don't think it's yeah. um, canon in the like. You I, don't think it's like the accurate timeline? No, like it's just like it's just kind of like let's say um, trying to think of an of an example like uh, like. Chris Farley and David Spade, they're in Tommy Boy, but they're friends mm -hmm. in real life. But Tommy Boy yeah. is just like a movie about them being friends, but it's not their real life. Okay, 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 I get what you're saying. Yeah, so like, like I think we're supposed to believe that the Muppets are real, mm -hmm. and they make movies sometimes. So they play like... Well, yeah, because they totally have that late night talk show, Up Late with Miss Piggy, duh. <laughs> Uh, are you talking? Are you referring to the new Muppets? Yes, I am. <laughs> so this kind of seg segues into um, the way I thought about the Muppets when I was a child. Mm -hmm. I was very puzzled by the Muppets. Okay, they, they confused me because I mean I knew I knew that like movies were real. Like I mean I knew that movies were fake, and obviously I knew that like cartoons were fake. Like if you watched a movie. Mm -hmm. And then it was, you know, like it was just like actors portraying a character. And if you watch a cartoon, I knew that it was drawings. But I would watch stuff with the Muppets, and the Muppets would be like interacting with people. And I didn't understand they were puppets. So I just like could not ever comprehend how, like, I, I'm like, are the Muppets real? Like, it just confused me for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how old were you when it stopped? confusing you um maybe like eight or nine i don't know okay well because i think in some way miss piggy and kermit and gonzo etc are real 
like well because they they make them interact with like actors and stuff and yeah like if you watch the muppet show like you know they have like celebrities on and the celebrities will play themselves and i'll be like wait how is miss miss piggy and like kermit the frog hanging out with like elton john they just are. That's the magic of the Muppets. And I just never realized they were puppets. I thought they were actually real. And it just, it confused me as a child. Mm-hmm. Then I remember my father took me and my cousin to go see Muppets Take Manhattan. Mm-hmm. Two minutes into the movie, I bawled my eyes out because the Muppets were gigantic on the screen. <laughs> and it, it, frightened, <laughs> it frightened the fuck out of me. Oh my gosh. Like, can you, all right, just imagine seeing Miss Piggy, like, 40 feet tall. And you're, like, seven or something. Yeah, that would freak me I out. I was probably way younger than seven whenever this movie came. Maybe, like, five or six. I don't Yeah, I don't remember how old we were when it came. I remember, I don't think I watched it in the theater. I think I watched it on TV or something or on a VHS. Yeah, because like, I never mind watching the Muppets in on television but when i saw them on a movie screen i was freaked the fuck out yeah i can see that plus i thought they were real so i just like i was like holy shit like this might even been the first movie i've ever gone to i don't even know but it was definitely an early movie that i went to and i that's how big i thought they were in real life and it just scared the hell out of me oh my gosh yeah i thought i thought they were gonna come out of the movie and like they're gonna like (laughs) stomp through the crowd oh yes yeah, see, my first movie was, like, The Great Mouse Detective. Oh, very tame. Yeah, I just remember, like, my dad, like, went off to the smoking section or something for a while, because that's how long ago it was. There's a smoking movie section? Movie theaters had smoking sections. That's awesome. Like, you can just go and, like, light a bus in the corner of the movie theater? Yeah, like, there's, like, a whole, like, area to go smoke. Do you know what would be amazing? Like, let's say, like, movie theaters today have, like, a drinking section, and you can just abandon your kids and go over to the drinking section. Oh, my God. It's like, okay, kids, you sit here, you watch this dinosaur or whatever. Mommy and Daddy are going to go over here and have some grown-up drinks. Like, I will def- see you when the movie's done. I definitely, like, if I would go to, like, a department store with my mom when I was little, I would definitely, like, go off on... I would just, like, hang out in the toy section by myself. Really? I always got dragged around the store. Oh, like, we would go to, like, Kmart, and my mother would do, like, clothes shopping. I never wanted to go, like, clothes shopping. So I would just be like, oh, I'll be in the toy section if you need me. And I would just stare oh, at all... we went to, like, Sears or A&S or something like that for clothing shopping. Okay. And I would just, like, sit in the toy section and just open up all the toys and play with them. <laughs> oh, my God. You were that little brat. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was that kid. Like, I would put Legos together in the aisle. And it, I just assumed it was normal. And no one ever said anything to me. Like, I never got in trouble for yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, trust me. Like, I have to, like... When I go to, like, Walmart or something with my nephew, he always wants me to, like, open the toys. And I'm like, I can't open it, sweetie. <laughs> We have to leave it in the box for right now. You should just leave them in the toy aisle by himself and then go to, like, the clothes department and buy all your shit. Oh, dear God, no. I could not. No, he's not even three. You can't do that today. You'd be, like, imprisoned. No, I can't. Well, first off, one, he would start screeching, And two? Like, at the top of his lugs. And two, which trust me is a little terrifying when you're in a different aisle and you suddenly hear someone yelling "Aunt Cat" or like whatever your name is, and you're just like, "Oh my god, what the like, hell?" Please don't be me. Please don't be me. <laughs> oh, the poor friends. Like, I know it's me. I know it's me, and I'm like, I couldn't find him because by the time like I got a hold of my stepmom on the phone, she had taken him out of the Walmart. Oh, really? Because he just would not stop screaming for me because like i went to go get some stuff i needed and he couldn't see me and he thought i would like let him have a toy or something (laughs) it's like no (laughs) i'm definitely like no you're not getting that toy right now sweetie i never want that responsibility anyway (laughs) (laughs) all right so there's a whole conundrum going on with uh kermit and miss piggy in this episode so Miss Piggy had a photo shoot she scheduled at the last session at last second. On Christmas Eve. So she's still in the city, so she hasn't come to the farm yet. And Kermit's all like, Miss Piggy, where are you? I'm worried. He's like worried the whole time. 
Like, because there's a storm about to blow into town. Yeah, like, the biggest, the worst blizzard in 50 years or something is coming. And Miss Piggy's still in California. Like, she's she can't be that far away if it's driving distance, and she arrives there on the same day. Yeah, I think she's just, like, in the big city. Like, this... Nearby or something. The closest city It's like nearby. New York or something. But, all right, so this is where the timeline gets kind of weird, because five minutes later... She calls back. I don't know why she calls back like five minutes later, but she calls back like five minutes later and is like, Kermit, Kermit, I'm at the mall buying presents. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm just doing my last minute shopping, Kermit. I'll be there as soon as I'm done. And she has like the craziest 80s perm you'll ever see. I love 80s Miss Piggy. She was so <laughs> glamorous. She had like a. I wanted to be Miss Piggy when I was a kid. Like, Miss Piggy was like my hero. Like, she just had this insane 80s perm. It was like so goddamn curly. Mm-hmm. It was like almost kind of like. Remember that? Like, um, is it. Did Stevie Nicks ever have like a weird, like, frilly perm like that? I have no idea. I'm trying to think of like someone like provide an example, but it was just like crazy fucking curly perm. It was insane. It was just like the biggest hair you'll ever see on Miss Piggy. Like it wasn't that like flat, straightened hair. Yeah, it was her. Just, it was just like the classic '80s perm that you everybody had. And it looks like it actually looks like she probably really wasn't doing a photo shoot. She was probably at the mall doing like a glamour shot. Let's get real. Let's get real right here. Oh my god. And she's showing leg. Like, she's going insane during this photo shoot, too. Well, it's Miss Piggy. What do you expect? Like, I, this could even have been like a Playboy shoot. We don't even know. But five minutes later, she's at the mall. And while she's at the mall, I guess wherever Kermit was, that was where the storm started to pick up, like, intensely. Yeah. It was getting insane. And Kermit's still worried. Everyone's, like, telling him to relax. Like, don't worry, Miss Piggy. Like, she's Miss Piggy. She'll get her. She she has access to, like, a limo and all kinds of crazy things. She'll find a way to get her. It's Miss Piggy. She will get to Kermit. If Miss Piggy wants to get to Kermit, she will get to Kermit. Yeah. She will kung fu chop and say, all the way to wherever this fucking farmhouse is. Yeah, exactly. Like, he shouldn't have been that worried. Like, I, it, it's really cute and sweet that he was worried because, you know, how they ended it all. He was ruining his enjoyment. Yeah. So, then Miss Piggy calls back, and now she's at, like, a phone booth? Yeah, because the limo hit a snowbank. And is stuck in the snowbank. She can't get it out. So, she was waiting for a cab? Yeah, she was going to go hail a cab. So she steps out of the phone booth. It is so goddamn windy and snowy that the the phone booth actually blows away. Yes, that uh, was awesome. And Miss Piggy, for like a few moments, is like perfectly fine. She's still standing there looking at it going, huh, huh. And then she gets blown away by the snow. Yeah. Then she calls again like 10 minutes later. She calls back. Mm-hmm. And now her cab is stuck in the snow, and she's, like, trying to pick it up, like, trying to push the cab out of the snow. Yeah. And she's, like, Get oh, covered in mud. Yeah, she gets covered in mud, because she's, like, on the car of three, drive, one, two, three. And the taxi driver hits the, the, the gas, and then, like, the wheel skids up, like, mud all over her. Yeah. And Kermit's still worried. But never fear, Miss Piggy will show up looking glamorous as always. Yeah, so um, Doc ends up coming across Kermit, like, because Kermit's still just staring out the window. Basically, all he did this episode was stare out the window. Yeah, he just stared out the window, like, hoping Miss Piggy would show up. And he's like, hmm, I wonder where Piggy is. Huh. And Doc came along and he's like, hey, I've never met Miss Piggy, but if you want, I'm gonna, I'll go out there and I'll try to find her. Meanwhile, she doesn't, like, give... Kermit doesn't give Doc any guidance of, like, which direction she might be coming from. There's no yeah. indication of, like, where she might be. Maybe there's only one direction she could be coming from. South, I guess? 
Yeah. I mean, I guess you can either go north or south, and if you go north, it probably just gets crazier. So I, I guess you're assuming south, right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. But he's he's never met Miss Piggy, so I guess his game plan is he's just going to drive until he finds a car, and then it's just going to be like, are you Miss Piggy? With a pig? Yeah. There, There's no logic behind it, but he goes, and I guess he, he ends up finding Miss Piggy, though. Yeah, he finds Miss Piggy, and she just happens to have a Mountie outfit that will fit Doc. And she has, like, a whole new wardrobe on, too. And, like, 12 reindeer and a sleigh. <laughs> yeah, she's got... I thought it was dogs. Oh, was it dogs? I don't know. I think it was a dog sled. It probably was a dog sled. But, well, regardless, she had 12 dogs and a sleigh and a Mountie outfit for Doc. And a whole new outfit for herself. Yeah. And the outfit was kind of skimpy for being outside during a blizzard, too. Yeah. And... Actually, when she showed up, like, the snow suddenly stopped. It just stopped snowing. The snow was over. And, like, this episode was pretty much, like, done in real time, so it only had been, like, 30 minutes. Like, this whole ordeal happened in 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure, it, actually, it was a little longer. But, I mean, like, they it all took place in, within the same, like, evening. If Miss Piggy mm-hmm. was going to be, like showing up eventually, they should have just waited for her. Yeah. Like, why did she not go with them? I, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. And, alright, so that is pretty much the Kermit and Piggy story. Uh, the other story involves the Swedish chef. Yes, the Swedish chef. <laughs> I love this one. Alright, so, I guess he was invited to come to cook them a Christmas turkey. Well, because obviously none of the rest of them know how to cook. Yep, not one of them know how to cook. So they invite the Swedish chef. He orders a turkey to come to the house, and an actual, like, a Muppet turkey shows up. Like, a living Muppet turkey. Yeah, and he's got sunglasses, and he's got a bag with a tennis racket. Yeah, he's, like, kind of cool. Like, he's there for a vacation. Yeah, and Gonzo's worried, because Gonzo's like, oh, God, he's like... You know, like, why you're here, right? And and the Christmas trick, he's like, yeah, I'm here for, like, a great time. We're going to have some fun. We're going to play some tennis in this blizzard. I got these cool sunglasses. Like, yeah, let's have some fun. And Gonzo's like, no, we're going to eat you. (laughs) Like, you need to get out of here. Yeah. He's like, I'll take my chances. I've been in worse. So. Yeah. I guess what saves him from being cooked is that Big Bird and the Sesame Street gang show up. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. So the Swedish. Well, first, the turkey tries to convince the Swedish chef that he is not a turkey, but Sprocket is a turkey. Yeah, the Swedish chef kind of, like, agrees for a minute, actually. <laughs> he believes it. Oh, Sprocket totally goes... He, the Swedish chef totally goes for Sprocket. He, like... And Doc's like, I don't care what the turkey says. Sprocket is a dog. He's not a turkey. <laughs> and so then Swedish chef comes across the Christmas turkey again, and the Christmas turkey convinces him that there's a bigger bird there. It's Big Bird. Mm-hmm. And that would like that would be a male that would feed everyone in that house. Let's get, let's be honest. Yeah, because there at this point there's like a hundred characters there. You got every Muppet from the Muppet movie crew. You got every Sesame Street monster and character, and you get the Fraggle Rock characters in the basement. Yeah. Plus, you get Doc, <laughs> like a human. <laughs> So mm-hmm. now you got like that. It's just like the fullest house you could possibly have. So, are you going to eat this small Christmas turkey, or are you going to eat this gigantic fucking big bird? You're going for the big bird, of course. So and you've got that many people to feed. Yeah. So the Swedish chef lures Big Bird into the kitchen, and he and Big he's Bird plotting Big Bird's demise. Yeah, he pretty much is like sizing him up, and Big Bird charms the hell out of him. Hello? I'm here. I thought you had a response. <laughs> oh, no. You just, like, stopped talking, and I was like, oh, crap, my phone must have dropped. Oh, so Big Bird charms the hell out of him. He, he has... Yes, he gives the Swedish chef 
chocolate covered bird seed. And he's like, I know you're all alone here from Sweden. And I want it to be friendly and blah, blah, blah. The Swedish chef's like, tiny little heart crows three sizes. And he decides to let Big Bird live. And instead they have like some cranberry nut bread or something for the holiday meal. Which They is- have shredded wheat and cranberry sauce. And it was like this tiny like pan of it. It was definitely not enough for every Muppet character that was there. Yeah. And that wasn't enough for like the original group. No, but they're they're gonna parcel it over like a hundred Mupp- Jim Henson cre- creations. Mm-hmm. And Doc. Uh, so then, yeah. um, there's there's kind of um, a lot of songs in between that, but there's also a segment where. Uh, Kermit and his nephew Robin decide to go into the basement. Yeah, they're in the cellar, and Robin's all like, Uncle Kermit, Uncle Kermit, remember how you said if we ever found a fraggle hole, we could go in it and go down to Fraggle Rock? And Kermit's like, well, yeah, why? And Robin goes, is that a fraggle hole? And so they go down into Fraggle Rock. They meet some fraggles. And the Fraggles are like, what's Christmas? And they explain. They're like, oh, we have a holiday like that. It just happens to be right now. And we give this gift a pebble, and we pass it on, and they sing this like ridiculous song about regifting. <laughs> the original regif- regifters, the Fraggle yes. Rock group. <laughs> uh, so then they all go back upstairs. And is this where they just sing for 20 minutes at this point? Um... No, Miss Pig. This is when Miss Piggy shows up. Okay. And when she arrives, that's when the singing kind of starts. Okay, but there's like there's no other storyline going on though, from what I remember. Yeah, like pretty much like the storylines are wrapped up at this point. And then it's just like twenty minutes of songs. <laughs> yeah. Like I kept waiting for something to happen. Like maybe the power would go out or something. There's like some something. Other, yeah, some other conundrum. But no, they just sang for twenty minutes. They just kept on singing. Like they just like every character had to have like a like a sentence of a song, basically like a line from a song. The mm-hmm. the only one who didn't sing in this episode was Oscar the Grouch. Yeah, and he was like grouchy the whole time. And he was total like downer. He's that guy at the Christmas party who's like, "Why did I come here? Why did they even invite him? I don't. Why do they bring him anywhere?" He was caroling with the other Sesame Street characters. Well, he went caroling out in the them, middle of the country. But he didn't sing when they when it, like because they went down the whole Sesame Street crew, and then they stopped mm-hmm. at Oscar, and Oscar just like shrugged his shoulders. And but why did he even go? Yeah, I don't know. Why Maybe he because just, he didn't want to be alone on Sesame Street. He could have he could have hung out with like Gordon and the, uh, the deaf woman. Yeah, he could have hung out with all, like, the humans, but... Yeah, they, and why did the humans come? Did they not have enough room on the yeah. stage? Probably not. Do you ever, like, I was trying to think of the logistics of doing this episode. Like, because mm-hmm. remember when we, when we were, like, reading about Elf, like, how the actors would have to, like, walk around, like, holes in the floor? Yeah, there's definitely, like... A million holes in the floor. A million holes in the floor. Like, well, that's what they do with Sesame Street and the Muppet Show. Yeah, so then I started thinking about it. Then I realized, you know what? Whenever they have, like, a human and a Muppet together, there's not really much movement from the human. Like, the Muppets are all over the fucking place, and, like, more Muppets are showing Mm -hmm. up. But the humans either are just, like, standing there or, like, sitting down. Yeah, like, you don't see them dancing together. No, so... They, when when they were doing the song medley at the end, when they show like pretty much mm-hmm. like a shot of every Muppet, there must have been like three hundred puppeteers like in that room right there, and Doc. Yeah, and I was just like trying to think of how much of a nightmare it must have been. Yeah, and like there were puppeteers who did several Muppets, so yeah, like like you would have to have like three people do like Kermit, right? Yeah, you'd have to have people doing Kermit, people doing Rolf, you know? Yeah. You can't have Jim Henson doing all of them at once because everybody's doing something. And then do you ever wonder if if they add in the they dub in the voices later or do they re- like read them aloud during the shoot? I think they re- do it as they're shooting. Okay. I I just I've always wondered that. I'm like I wonder if like how the whole voices 
section of this works. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much a month of Christmas, right? Because I, I I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Because we mostly just jib jabbed through it. Because, like I said, there was. No... Oh, we didn't talk about Fozzie and the Snowman. Was there like anything to say though? They just had a song together, and Fozzie thought it was like a new act. Well, that's Fozzie's new uh, comedy act. It's him and the Snowman he builds. Did he build the snowman? It's so or ridiculous. Snowman he builds there? a snowman. He tells lame jokes just like him. And they sing songs together, maybe? And then they sing songs together because, you know, they're Muppets and that's what they do. You know, I was kind of like the snowman character annoyed me because like, I was like, I don't have time for these new Muppets I don't know about. <laughs> I was like, it's like I can barely keep track of the ones I know. Yeah, like there is you have 70 Jim Henson creations we already know and love in one room. And now I have to bring in a fucking new snowman Muppet. I'm like, hurry along, hurry along. I, I, yeah, I honestly would just blank out any time that snowman came on the screen, which was only for like a two minute song anyway. I think they yeah. did Jingle Bells. Oh, maybe. I know what we forgot. The mink. Oh, uh, all right. So Kermit gets Miss Piggy a mink for Christmas. Yes. And it's not a mink coat. It's like the animal, a mink. <laughs> it's legit mink named Maureen, who is Miss Piggy's biggest fan. And she has the same perm as Miss Piggy, too. Mad. Mm -hmm. The same fucking, like, Stevie Nicks 80s perm. Oh, yeah. She's totally there to, like, single white female Miss Piggy. Let's be real. Yeah, so Miss Piggy was probably filleted, like, a day later. Oh, God. <laughs> Miss Piggy is alive and doing as okay as she can after the breakup. Is that... So, is, yeah. Is the new Muppets canon, though? Um, I would think so. And, like I know it's I know it's a good show, but I just like I feel like it takes place in a separate universe than than these Muppets. Mm, I think they they're all just one big weird crazy universe. Uh, I I feel like when Jim Henson croaked, then like the Muppets as we know and love just died with him, and we just kind of have like a new incarnation of the Muppets. It's like an alternate universe of the Muppets. Mm -hmm. And actually, like any every Muppet, like every different Muppet production is just definitely like an alternate universe. It seems like well, because things are always different. There's always like a new backstory. Yeah, like the there's new Muppets that like have seen like that Muppet movie with um Jason Siegel. Yeah, like there's no way that takes place in the same universe as the Muppet Family Christmas to me. Mm -hmm. Like there, it's a it's like Earth two. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Any any last minute thoughts? Anything that I missed on a Muppet Family Christmas? I don't think so. I think we got it all. I think we got it all. So we we made it through the holiday season. I think, right? Yeah, we have survived. And yeah, so we made it through Christmas. We you got like seventeen bonus episodes from us. <laughs> Some blog posts. You got more of us than you ever thought you would get at Christmas. And you probably won't come back. Who knows they'll come back? Because they've stuck around this long, they want to see what's next. Uh, so we're pretty much going to take a like a few-day break. We're going to be breaking for a few days. Mm -hmm. And should we announce it? Should we make the announcement? Of what's next? Uh, we might as well let them know. All right, so we'll be back in like seven or eight days with a New Year's special, the final episode of that 70s show, which takes place on New Year's Eve in 1979. Yep. And lots of crazy things happen. Uh, characters come back. and Characters just vanish in the middle of the episode. Characters vanish in the middle of the episode, and everything just wraps up, basically, and they swift off into the 80s. Yep. And just like we're going to swift off into 2016. Can't believe it's almost 2016. I know. So uh, I guess have a merry swift miss, everybody. Merry swift 
Cliff. Uh, there was a, it was a lame ta- t- uh, Taylor Swift joke. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't. You could have said "Have a happy Christmas." I know, but that was last episode. Ah, uh, so. If you want to get yourself ready for the That 70s Show New Year's Eve episode, definitely check out our last year's New Year's Eve episode in which we watched the movie New Year's Eve. Yes. Which starred pretty much every Hollywood celebrity and Ryan Seacrest, the robot. Yes, you said it correctly. Not the robot, the robot. The robot. So um, I guess, as always, uh, join us next year. Bye! And until next time.